Hello everyone. Uh, today I will be showing you how I do my nature landscape kind of backgrounds like sunsets and stuff. A lot of people have asked me. So let's check it out. Um, first I'm going to start. You now I'm going to do my sunset in this area. I'm also going to do some rocks probably at the bottom here. So I'm going to use the same yellow. The Rust-Oleum Two Times Painter Touch Marigold. So here we go. We'll spray it right here in the center. Make sure you shake them up good. I don't know if I did that. It's a little humid in here and they spray weird. So, I'm going to spray this in the middle. I'm going to cover the bottom too. Okay. Plenty of yellow in the middle. Got some orange here. Cover the bottom as well for the rocks. The main goal is the sunset right here on this middle. Do some red, so it's going to fade yellow red onto the obvious colors. So as you can see, I'm kind of going fast, not putting a whole lot down. I still want that, that red in there. Now I'm going to switch to this uh, seaside blue. We try to stay in this area and not do too much of the rocks down here. Just that part that would be the actual sunset. And I'm going to hit with some uh, navy blue sky. Once again, we'll fill them. I'm going to cover the outsides. Let's see, you'll see little parts in here. A little bit in the center, not too much. Now what I like to do is, I collect different types of bags. This is from Walmart, as you can see. 7-Eleven, convenience stores. I like the consistency of the thinness of the plastic. So what I'm going to do is here, take my hands on the inside like this, stretch it out. I lay it down. I take my hand, I lightly press. I don't press really hard or smoothly like you would a piece of poster board. Now just lift it up, and now you got this, this little contrast going on here. I always like how that comes out. A little too much blue in there. So I folded this bad boy up thinly, kind of touch it, and give it some texture. Cool, I took some of that blue out. Now I like that, okay? Now I'm gonna cover the edges once again with this navy blue, and when I say edges, you'll see what I mean. I mean edges. Spraying fast. All right, I'm gonna take the black out. The edges, once again, I want that blue to black fade. Don't want too much black. The black I'm really just putting down for the rocks. So there's gonna be that, that contrast. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is take, actually, I'm gonna let this dry for about five minutes and I'm gonna come back and you'll see why. Okay, I'm back. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to flip this the other way, plus you can kind of see what, what's going on here. I'm going to take this cheap white, it's a Walmart brand, and I'm going to spray along this black edge, but on the inside, so it doesn't get on this colored part, okay? I'm going to start around, probably halfway to halfway, so let's see. A couple test sprays over here. Perfect, that's all I need. Okay. Take that same, another piece of plastic. 
go down here and what I do is I take my hand on the inside and I lay it down and I just try to not really draw but like scribble with my fingers. So I know I want the rocks to be around here. So I'm gonna start to make sure you get that white, but you leave it on the outside so it's showing up. Okay. You always go back over it if you have to. I want this to carry over here. I'm gonna go up a little bit on my fingers. Okay. I'm actually going to turn this back around again. You can see I'm going to use now the cheap black. And I'm going to shade the bottom half of these rocks. I just want the top around an inch or so layer of the rock showing. So, shake them up good. Give them a shake. Spray them off to the side. The main reason why I let it dry for five minutes is two reasons actually. Whenever I'm laying the plastic down, the drier it is, you can get cooler textures as you're moving the plastic. Plus, when you're using this cheaper paint, if you spray it right on top of the Rust-Oleum, which is actually a thicker, better paint, it starts to bleed. If you let it dry, this stuff will blend with any paint you have by letting it dry. And it was just five minutes, so it wasn't that long. Okay, so let's get the bottom half of these rocks. See how it's fading up to the edge? Okay. Now I know I'm also going to add, I want to add a little, 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 little happy tree in the middle, okay? Now what I do, I have a bunch of different stencils cut out. And this is one of them. Yeah, this guy right here I cut out. A little cool little edge, both edges actually. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this. It's like a little, little rock ledge. Now I'm gonna test this up here. See, it's, it's still a little wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna let this dry for another probably five minutes. Then eventually I'll come back and I'll lay this down, okay? And you can spray a little rock so it's still gonna be behind this rock. Most people always want to add it first, but in order to do that, you kind of got to let it dry for a while. Even if you hand paint it, it still can blend with the paint. So, so if you're not in a hurry and you're not doing live painting shows, I'm going to let this dry a little bit and lay this down, spray the rock right there, and then finish the painting. Be back in a couple minutes. First thing I'm going to do is take this white, cheap Walmart brand again, and I'm going to spray right in the center a light dot to have the sun kind of come alive. So I'm gonna spray off to the side, make sure I have the spray I want. Get, get close enough. I might want a little bit more. Maybe a little wider. Okay, so you got that. That made it a little bit more wet, but where I'm gonna put this little tree thing here so in actuality I should have sprayed that before I let it dry this last time so when I came back with this I wouldn't worry about touching it but it's such a light spray to let it dry for just lightly a, couple, like a minute or two and you can lay this down but I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down right here try not to touch that I'm gonna go back to my Rust-Oleum black here Lay this little rock guy down right here. I'm just gonna spray this edge. Bam. So now he's just gonna be chilling in there. I'm gonna add some more white mist right here, the bottom of it, so it's gonna blend in with it. Okay? So once we have that there, I'm gonna turn this to the side. I'm gonna get a spare piece of poster board. Any kind of little piece will do. Fold it in half.
spray right on the inside. Like, just a couple, couple sprays. Tilt it. You'll see it start to kind of get a little flow of paint. I'm gonna do a tree right here in the middle. And make the trunk at the bottom first. Actually, just draw even with dots. Add a little more paint if you need to. Anytime, make sure you have enough. You don't want to get it flowing too much. It might mess up the flow of what, how you have it looking. I kind of have a very thick trunk right here, which obviously just changed. I'm gonna go back in here and fill it on the bottom to make it all blend with each other. When you get to the end of your painting, you can give it a little flick. It'll actually give it a nice little little edge. Okay, gonna add some more paint onto the little card here. I'm gonna go over here and test it off to the side. Make sure it's doing what I what I want it to do. Come back over here to this side. Just kind of stop whenever you feel it's balanced. You know, one knows what trees look like. I don't know what kind of tree you want. Just want something real, real simple. Nothing, nothing too fancy. And add a little thing up top to make it more balanced. Okay. So I like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is, amongst the other stencils I have. I'm gonna have cut here on the edge, okay? I'm gonna take the cheap white, and I'm gonna go right up to the edge or the bottom of those, that black little rock mountain stencil I just sprayed. I'm gonna hold this real lightly just so it blends in. I'm spraying the edge of this. Just to get, 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 give it some texture. All right, that's cool. That's all you need, just a little bit of light light white spraying. Okay, now I'm gonna take my, my palette knife I got here. I'm gonna add some highlights to the edges of these rocks. Everyone does it their own way. I use different sizes. I keep a little thing of sandpaper on me at all times to scratch the palette knife off. So as you can see, I'm gonna get a little closer here going to smear these edges or technically scratch. It's supposed to be highlights coming off the rocks up there. So you definitely don't need so much unless the light is too bright or unless the rocks are flat then obviously more of it would have highlights. So right now I'm just going to do the edge So I'm gonna go up here and finish this guy. Sometimes you can start to see little highlight structures already in the rocks, I always do, and I kind of just accent ones that are already there if possible. That's what will end up making it look the most realistic to me. So as you can see, doing the highlights of the rocks there, you got the white mist beneath this rock. Now I'm gonna highlight the rock in the middle, okay? I'm not gonna touch that tree yet because it's still pretty wet. I mean, the rock I just sprayed is wet, but if you spray a thin layer, you can etch it out easier. Always fine when it's still wet, but somewhat dry. It's the easiest to actually etch the rocks out. Because when it's wet, it's really easy, but sometimes you smear it too much and it doesn't end up looking that real to me. So. 
I'm, I'm just highlighting the edge of this background rock that this tree is sitting on. And always try to go with the contour as much as you can of the rocks, top, bottom, whatever you need to, to highlight it to make it look real or to show that it has some light. So, little rock down here too as well. Some light highlights. If you do it light enough, it won't come out too much in front of that white and it'll, it'll look pretty real. So, I think on this guy, um, I'm gonna add a little, a, little, a little waterfall at the bottom. So, I'm gonna turn this back around again. Make sure this is dark enough black. Okay. Let's take a little card here I've cut. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some of the, the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch White to thicker paint. I'm gonna spray it on a card over here off to the side. In the paint, okay? Go down here. Find a good spot. Just give it a little drag down. I'm gonna have to go back and do it again. Trick it to try to get it on the first one. Whatever you need to, to make it look real. Always tap it and pull it straight down. Go over here and add one over here. Maybe add some water going in the background. So always make sure you have it pulled down as far as you want. Now you can take this cheap Walmart paint. And since this is the bottom of the painting, a lot of times people will use a straight edge and spray it. I'm just gonna spray at the bottom of the painting. Actually, first what I'm gonna do is take some of that paint, get it on the card, and you can kind of smear it on the bottom down here. Just to show some like light water trails. No, just, just light ends up coming across the best, it seems like. Alright, now you can take that cheap Walmart white, spray a dot under each little fall. I mean, honestly, you can almost, you know, just go at it. I mean, more mist makes it look more real, honestly. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this sock, fold it to where I have a nice unused clean spot. This is actually a sock inside out because of the texture on the actual sock itself. So take that, take the black, and spray it off to the side, a decent little amount. Take this guy, dab it, Always fold it and hold it tight so you have control of it. And I'm just gonna do the edges. You should get, a, get enough black on there though. I'm just gonna dabble the edges of that tree. That's all you need to do. I think we're pretty much done. I just wanted to do a simple piece to show you how I, how you can obviously take this technique and the way I did the background and add it to any painting, a huge painting way in the background, and then do whatever you want in the foreground. I just wanted to keep it simple on this. But I always use painter's tape when I use poster board. I like how it holds it down and then obviously marks it off. So that's that piece. So I hope this helped you out. Leave a request at the bottom of the video for any 
pieces you have seen of mine or techniques you might want to know about, I'll try to make one. Thank you.